The mathematical model for the wind turbine blade structural analysis is based on shell theory. The details of shell theory are quite involved and the mathematics is, uh, is quite detailed. However, one can understand it conceptually in a straightforward fashion as an extension of euler bernoulli beam theory. And if you're not familiar with the euler bernoulli beam theory, I would suggest that at some point you go through the cantilever beam module where I apply the euler bernoulli beam theory in answers to analyze a, a cantilever beam. And, you know, in terms of uh, the wind turbine blade, the mathematical details are very complex in applying the, uh, the shell theory to that particular example. Um, however, we have a fancy calculator at a disposal that will take care of the mathematical details. And so we can focus on the physical principles on which that mathematical model is based and the assumptions embedded in that mathematical model. First, let's talk about Euler Bernoulli beam theory. If you looked at a simple cantilever beam like that, um, that you had a load over here and you fix it, say at this end, okay? And to figure out how the beam is going to deform, you focus on the midline, which I've sketched in over here. And you say that, hey, the midline under the influence of this load, which I've shown schematically over here, is going to deform something like that. And I've exaggerated the deformation. So if I have a point on the midline like that, it's going to move, you know, in the y direction, that's in the transverse direction, to over here. And I also assume that, you know, any cross section like this is going to rotate uh, together on the whole. So if I show the cross section like that, it's just going to rotate, you know, as a whole, and that should be 90 degrees, and it doesn't look like that. Um, that's an assumption built into Euler Bernoulli beam theory. Um, you know, you say plane sections remain plane, usually, uh, that's how you couch it. And, and then you say for, you know, small deformations um, that the rotation angle of the cross section is just given by the slope of this, this curve. And once I, that means that, you know, once I know, uh, one, if I have a point like that, on the cross section, you know, it'll go over here. And if I know the um, the deformation of the midline as well as the the slope, um, then I know where I can back calculate what that where that point moves. So it reduces to figuring out what is the deformed state of the midline. And as we saw in the cantilever beam example, once we know that, we can figure out what the potential energy of the beam is going to be because we know how every point is going to move, the displacement at every point from which we can calculate the strains and <coughs> from the strains we can calculate the stresses based on the material properties and from that the potential energy. So we need to find the deformed midline such that the potential energy is minimized. Plate theory, which is a simpler form of shell theory, takes that same, you know, you would take, you know, you would look at, you know, say the same beam, and instead of focusing on the midline, what you do is you focus on how the mid surface is going to deform. Okay, so here is the mid surface, pardon my chicken scratch, but I think you get the idea. And under the influence of a load like that, you know, we assume we have the same load here, it's fixed over here, I'm not sketching it in, in the interest of simplicity. And under the influence of a load like that, it's going to deform like that. Um, so if I take a point over here, okay, it's going to move, actually it should, under the influence of a transverse load, it's going to move only in the transverse direction. So it's going to move over here. And 
and then you say you know what uh, the normals are just going to stay normal so if I had a normal like that over here that's going to still remain a normal okay um, so instead of looking at the you know saying that the cross section rotates together as a whole you'd say you know the normals rotate together so which means that if I have a point over here like that pardon me um, it's going to move over here okay so, which means that analogous to here if I know how each point on the mid surface moves okay um, so if usually you would say this is the x direction um, let's say that's the y direction and the normal is uh, denoted as z direction you know in plate theory and shell theory as opposed to y over here uh, slightly different notation so you need to know you know this is a key displacement um, you want to know how each point on the mid surface moves normal to itself um, and that the point on the mid surface can also move in the x and y direction and you want to know how the normals at the um, at the mid surface rotate so you need to know theta um, so here you know the rotation is about y you could also have a rotation about um, x think about it and then you could also you know generalize it to have like an in-plane rotation okay you could generalize this idea to have all three rotations of the normal um, that means if I know the um, the displacement and the rotations at the mid surface I can back calculate how every point on the um, within the beam moves so if I know the deformed mid surface I can figure out what the potential energy of the of the structure is I would need to know the thickness I think that's obvious you know because the whole thick this normal is as high as the the thickness uh, or half the thickness in one direction um, and so I need to know the thickness and then then I can find the strains and from the strains I can find the stresses if I know the material properties and then the problem reduces to finding the deformed mid surface such that potential energy is minimized and what shell theory does is it takes this idea and it generalizes to generalizes it to curved surfaces let's take a look at that next